This, we have this view on, I think, silent movie era um, is kind of calm, pristine. By all reports, it was a wild, wild west. And they were, like anything could go, they were making up, you know, the rules as they went along. And that's what I think Damien Chazelle has captured here. There's like, there's like Fellini moments in the opening scene. It's, it's funny, it's, it's moving, and it's big. It's really big. We follow all these characters as they move and cross paths through this this big seismic change from the, from the silent era to the talkies. This, I feel really fortunate. I feel really blessed to be part of this film with these people and, and really blessed just to be able to do this still, to tell stories. Um, and I think the movie points that out too, that, that none of us are important. It's the, it's the community, it's those that have come before us, it's those that will come after us that, 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 that what it's all about. It's honestly just grateful to be a part of it. I mean, I know that's like the easy thing to say, but I, I really mean it. Like, I feel like being in this movie means that yeah, someone in 20 or 30 or 40 years time is gonna be like, oh wow, I love that Nelly character. You know, it would just last, I hope. You're gonna be gobsmacked after seeing this movie. It's, it's just an amazing ride, but it makes you feel like you're there, like you're really immersed in that world. Like you're on a film set, like you see movie magic being captured in the moment. And I've felt that before and it's the best feeling in the world. And now people are gonna watch this movie and they're gonna feel that and I'm, I'm just excited for it. Margo to the left! Over that shoulder, I think that there's no way to be ready for all this. I still have to pinch myself every morning to realize that this is going on and it's real life, you know? <laughs> Oh, I had a blast. I mean, how could I not? Him and Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. Especially Brad Pitt. No, he was a joy. He was always, always had a great sense of humor, always supportive, always complimentary. He looked like he was having more fun than anybody. It, it made it a real pleasure. I mean, every shot, as I'm sure you saw, is like a, a canvas in a, in, in a, you know, a famous painting in the sense that there's so much packed into it. Um, and so I think that the more times you see it, the more you, you know, pick up on these little kernels, these little inside jokes, these um, nuances, I guess. It's like, it's, it's a dense movie in that way, but, it, you know, you can watch it the first time and it's like a wild ride. And every time is sort of a different layer of experience. It's comedy and tragedy. It's got both in it. And uh, I think people, you know, actors of the level of Margot or Brad or or Gene or Giovanna Depo or, you know, uh, Diego, they what they can do is they bring this humanity to it. So no matter how, you know, outrageous the stuff you see on screen is, and there's a lot of outrageous stuff in this movie, you know, Margot fights a snake. That's <laughs> that's outrageous. But she makes you believe it. You see the human being. You see you see the, the emotions underneath. That's real acting. That's not many people can pull that off. We packed everything into this movie, so it's a full meal. So there's a lot in it. So I think you're going to get something different every time you see it. We tried to, even every image, you know, we tried to sort of frame it uh, in depth. So you have foreground and background. You have different stuff going on in the frame at all times. So 
yeah, there's always something for the eye to look at, and I think every time you watch the movie, you'll see something else to look at, and that's, I think, part of the excitement of it. I started kind of conceiving this movie like 15 years ago, you know, so Hollywood has changed even during the course of writing and making this movie. But yeah, you can't not be aware, you know, releasing this movie right now, you know, it's, it's um, there's a ton of parallels, and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think uh, that makes the movie all the more... Uh, I, I think exciting for audiences today. I'd say also the parallels don't just extend to Hollywood today. They extend to every work of, you know, every workplace, industry, art form, way of life today. All over the world, people are feeling like they're in some kind of transition. Like the world is changing. Like technology is changing our lives. That's what this movie is about. It's about what it feels like to experience that kind of transition. This movie, Babylon, is pure art. It's a giant, sprawling epic, and Damien Chazelle just followed his vision, come what may. He's not interested in trying to make something to sell. He's interested in like pursuing his love for cinema, his like absolute getting lost and immersing himself in a piece of art. And the whole movie is, you know, it's love to cinema. And that, like, that time in, in the United States or all over the world when the, when the silent films transition to the talking films, that's a major cultural shift that changed the way our, our culture operated um, as much as, like, the advent of the computer or something. Like, it's a huge shift in the psyche of, of the world. And, um, to, like, and I've always been amazed by that period of history. And to see it captured so thoughtfully on film is, is awesome. Guys on the left side, big smiles right here. It shows a period of time in our history that is gone, it's decadent, it's memorable, and fun to watch. Well, it's bigger than life, so you have to see it on the big screen, and the detail is forever, so you got to see it more than once. It's a labor of love from all of us. We all work really hard every day coming in trying to do the best for Damien and for this story. And so I think it's, it's reflective of, uh, of that in the film. He's a brilliant filmmaker. I've been a fan of his for so long. I remember meeting him um, when he was promoting La La Land and I was doing Fences. And I went up to him at a party and I was like really nervous and I was like, hey dude, I know you're busy and you got a lot of people around you. I just want an opportunity to work with you one day. And I think I kind of manifested that and it's, it's been really cool every day on set to come in, work hard with a bunch of actors who are super talented for a story that I think is really interesting and ambitious and it's fun. I was honestly so excited in the car on the way over because for those of us who have seen the movie, we know how wild it is, we know how provocative it is, um, and how disruptive it is, and I just don't think people quite realize what they're getting into. So I'm kind of sort of like a little bit giddy to see how people respond. Diego, who I think a lot of the people haven't seen in a movie yet, is such a movie star, and he's gonna really blow people away. I mean, I think we all had this experience of when you first meet him, you sort of see this guy, and you're just like, wow, you really feel like an iconic, star of 50 years ago or something. He's got such a timeless quality to him. When I f saw that first cut, I, I understood how beautiful it was, the cinematography that Lena shot and the, the, the tone of it, which is not quite what I thought based on the script. You know, I read the script and I was blown away, but then you see the way the actors play it and it's, it always surprises you. So every step of the way from the first cut through each cut to the very end, I was always seeing things that I had never seen before and I'm just always blown away by Damien's filmmaking. There's these legendary directors of our time, right? And and I've been lucky enough to work with some of them. Thank you, God. Let's keep doing that. But they all have this innate uh, ability. Yes, they're encyclopedic knowledge. They know cinema and how to make it look beautiful. But with actors, they really make you feel like, look, I am going to make you throw the touchdown pass in the Super Bowl. And you're like, what do you? 
I haven't even played, are you crazy? But now before when you hear that, you're like, that's nuts. But in the moment, you're like, I'm Tom Brady. I'm going to win this goddamn game and get a touchdown. They all have that innate ability to make that actor feel like, oh my God, I feel like a god. And then we all feel that way. And when that magical moment is thumping, the room goes, woom, woom. And then the DP and the rack focus and the, and the, and the PAs, everyone is thumping in one unit. And the great directors know how to make that moment special. And weirdly, it's, you know, it's, this movie's about those moments too. So it's like, we didn't want to let that down. And I hope it happens. It's big picture, it's big sound. Uh, I think it has incredible relatability. The struggle of uh, anybody in the arts, but in this particular case, actors and filmmakers trying to make it at a, such a pivotal time in Hollywood. And I think what will surprise people is the depth of, of that story at a pivotal time. And just to be participating in a movie of this scope at the time was wildly intimidating, incredibly educational, but uh, it was kind of like getting the, the gift you wished for, okay. getting to work with him in, in a movie like this. I don't know, it has everything in the kitchen sink in it. The opening is, you know, Damien wanted the opening to be the party to end all parties, you know, so it's maximalist, it's, uh, you know, it's a music driven movie that moves fast, but it covers a lot of ground. Um, look, I, I think, I hope people in this town especially will like this movie. It's a movie about what happens when you come to Hollywood. It's about how people are transformed, and I think that's something a lot of people can identify with. They can expect Margot Robbie fighting a snake. They can expect probably the only movie, or one of the only movies made today, 99.9% uh, .9 practically. There's virtually no green screen in this film. And the sheer size and scope of it is mind-blowing. Uh, you're gonna see uh, things in this movie that you, you will probably go, how did they do that? And the answer is we did it the same way they did 100 years ago. So we have a battle sequence with 700 extras shooting a, a war movie like they did in, in the 20s. Uh, we got live snakes, live alligators. To, to be honest, the, it's like we have everything in this movie. This movie, if you, if you want to pay attention the second or third time, because it, it's a multiple watch movie, just to pay attention to the musicality of the movie and the intercutting and what he does with Tom Cross, and Justin Hurwitz's score is extraordinary and really unlike what most filmmakers are even attempting to do. People keep saying it's just so much and that's by design. It was meant to be a lot and we actually hoped that we could design a film that you could sort of fall into two, three, four, five times. Those movies that you rewatch over and over in your life and they're always revealing something new that was our goal